You got me in stitches. I'm Anna. I hope you guys have had a really good week, whatever you have been up to. Today I'm going to show you in tell about the sewing machine that I sew on, and it is a Frista Rossman. If that is something that interests you guys, then stay tuned. So, guys, I will start off with a very tiny brief history of Frista Rossman. So, they are a German company and Berlin based, and it's let me get this right, Gustav Rossmann and Robert Frister and I believe they originally started it around 1864 so yeah quite a while ago which is fascinating so primarily their machines are regular sewing machines and also they do embroidery machines so perhaps that's a little less known also they are currently now owned by SM D Retail Limited, which is a parent company of Sewing Machines Direct, I believe. So I'm not too sure of the configuration there, but I'm sure if you guys go on other platforms and find a more in-depth detail of what and why perhaps things change with companies over the years, I'm sure you'll find a wealth of information. Okay guys, so what I'm going to do now is talk through and show and tell about what my machine is all about okay so just quickly before we actually get to the machine just want to show you that this was oh, a bit washed out the instruction booklet that came with the machine and yeah I'll do a little quick flick through for you guys Yeah, and also this little box. Now a little bit of a story with this box, because if you remember a bunch of time ago, this actually won't walk about. And when I made my pitchwork dress, I had uh, poured out all my little uh, scrap pieces of fabric. And shockingly, this must have fallen down somehow and, and gone inside the bag. And then as I was obviously putting or the scripts and everything in. I mean, no one studies a scrap bag, do they? But when I um, poured it out so I could find some scraps to make the scrap dress, this is where it was. So I've actually found, because obviously inside, this was my buttonhole feet that were in there. So, and amongst all the other regular feet as well so in a moment I will show you guys the contents that are in here which came with the sewing machine as well but let's start with the sewing machine right so we will start off with the top of the machine so this here is called the special stitch selector where you can select different stitchings and also button holes then here we have both the thread spools so currently I'm not doing anything with two rows of stitching so I've got mine set up with just one spool of thread this area here is the bobbin winder and all the mechanism there so you would put the bobbin on there and this would lock in and then the thread would come around and then at turbo speed get wound on the bobbin. When it's completely full, that will click and then you can remove the bobbin. 
Okay, these two here are called the stitch width lock. This little lever here, you can move backwards and forwards. And here we got a leather for the, that should be currently in the middle, for where the needle position would be. And then you would move it to the left or the right, depending on what you are stitching. And here we've got the dial that is the stitch length control, which just turns smoothly and this black button here which is plastic and you push and that is to do the reverse stitch following down here is the feed dog control so currently the feed dogs are in the up position but if I was doing something with free, mo free motion embroidery that would then go, just turn to the left and those feed dogs would then come down. Okay, so this is the hand crank. So you would turn to the desired motion and you pull it out for when you are winding your barbin. And then when you are finished winding, you would then simply push it back in. I will demonstrate that later. Okay so over on this side this here is a bobbin winder tension disc. This is the presser foot. This is the take up thread area and then coming down we have the thread guide which is here. This area here is the thread tension assembly. We have the thread guide here where the thread will go in between quite a snug area there. Okay so this area here is the needle clamp which holds the needle in securely and again I will demonstrate and it will unscrew there. Sometimes it can be a little bit stiff by the finger, but other times it's okay. Then following down we have the presser foot thumb screw area. Again, sometimes that can be a little stiff. Then we have the actual foot area and around the back here, which lifts by a lever up and down. Then we have, I'll lift that up so you can see the feed dog area there. This little square is the needle plate and in here is the little door to access the barbin and it's all metal in there and the barbin case is also metal. This also here can be changeable. There is also a tray that additionally goes on which I will show you guys in a moment. Okay so this is the table that accompanies the machine here. I used to use this all the time and now I don't. <laughs> this is the underside of the tray and the legs move and that one as well. We also have two little levers here that pull and that pulls back there because in here you have the little hole where it helps secure the tray. So you would slide it in and then you would pull and I can feel them. And that slots in nicely there and then we have a nice big table to do sewing. Okay, so as you can see, the little box that accompanies the sewing machine had all these tools and feet inside. So here is a quick unpick. 
that I've never used, so I don't know if the previous owner had used some spare needles. This is the plate, the spare, the spare plate here. Now this is the one that has a hole here and that is for regular straight stitching. So the one that's currently on there, you can do regular straight stitching, but also the area here where the dot is, is actually wider. So you can do zigzag stitching. Then obviously you have two different size uh, screwdrivers. Sorry guys, <laughs> my brain wasn't in gear there. And this is a buttonhole guide. This little strange looking thing here. These are the different sizes that you get for when you're installing your button holes, stitching the button holes rather. And then these are the different feet that come with the machine. And also you see the little box there, the needle threader. Okay, so we will start off showing you the zipper foot. So that moves along there at the back. It's a plastic foot there, but metal everywhere else. Then the second foot is a button sewing foot. So pretty straightforward there. Then the other foot is called a roller foot. You can see it rolls there for fabrics perhaps like vinyl or leather work that moves there and also there is another roller part to that foot there as well. Also the other foot here is a stretch stitch foot and plastic there and it's yellowed a little bit so I don't know if it came I think it perhaps did come slightly yellowy because this is kind of goldy brassy looking there again relatively straightforward on that and there is an additional foot in there and I don't know if you guys can help me out but I'm not too sure what that foot is there so perhaps you could put a comment and let me know what you think that foot is okay guys so I'm going to show you on the frista how I wind the barbin I'm using cotton thread which is a coat duet my machine likes coat duet and it also likes the Goodman thread so it's quite happy with either so I'm going to place the spool on here I'm going to pull the thread in front around here I'm going to twist it over so it's like a kind of cross over thread and then gently pull that I have my barbin here which is metal I'm going to insert, insert rather the thread through the other side catch that with my finger and hold it there and what I tend to do is just wrap it around a couple of times it's just more comfortable for me then I slide that on here and you know it's right down the bottom there then here the lever I push so it's clicked in then with the crank I pull the crank out because if I don't do that, then the needle will just go up and down, whizzing really quickly, and yeah. So, okay, I'm just now going to gently put my foot on the presser foot and just feel the barbin just a little bit for you. Now, guys, I'm not going to wind this full bobbin. This was just for a demonstration because I already currently have a little bit of thread left on this bobbin. But what would happen is once it gets to full capacity in here, this will automatically 
spit out like that when it's full and then when that happens you then take it off and then you would snip I'm not going to do that because I'm going to put this thread back on the spool and then to remember to push the crank back in and then you're ready to sew okay so once the barbin is full this is the one that I currently had in my machine and I just swapped out for demonstration purposes you would then install that inside now on this one I'll hold that if I can this thread goes in the up position there and you can see where the thread then that I pull and then it will go through there so if I slot that inside the case and then grab this thread here and it will go in and then it's ready to install inside the machine Okay guys, so I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of a regular straight stitch on the machine. I have just got a little leftover piece of fabric which you guys will probably recognise from my lander pants. So just lifting the lever and putting the fabric in there, closing the lever. And I used the hand crank a couple of times, then put my foot on the press the foot and away we go. At the end I push the button for the back stitch, lift the lever, pull out and then cut off there and as you can see either side nice row of stitching. Okay, so also I'm just going to give you guys a quick demonstration on a zigzag. So I'm just going to turn the dial to number two. I'm going to move the lever here to number two. I'm going to push this button in and slide. So that is then locked. And then over here, if you recall earlier when I was saying about you can remove the plate. Well here there's a little thing you can push and it clips out and I will just remove it a little bit and here you can see the straight line and that is to help with the needle to go back and forth in a zigzag motion which you would not be able to do if I had the other plate on with just the round hole again I'm going to use the same fabric and it's just a single layer
turn the crank handle just do a couple of stitches and if I want to lock them then I hit that reverse go back and then I start stitching in a forward motion and again at the end I would lock pull out cut off and there is the zigzag so that's the front and that is the reverse okay again just for demonstration purposes you know guys that I got used to doing freehand uh, motion buttonholes because obviously my feet had gone walk about for a bunch of time so I will just quickly show you so place it under there, pull the lever down, do a couple of locking stitches and then straight stitch following that line but then locking stitch at the end turn that around And then stitch until it meets the locking stitch at the other end. Back stitch. Pull that out. Take those loose threads off. And you can see there. Now I would just um, strengthen that. I would actually go over that twice and I would use an actual slightly tighter stitching so I think you get the general idea guys so that's how I do my button holes okay guys so I hope you enjoyed that I'm ever so sorry it's a little bit rough around the edges I can only do what I've managed to do today and the light isn't great inside so I had to come outside and as you guys know I have to navigate around the wind and the traffic and everything like that and also my teenage Athling helped out with holding the camera on the tripod and kind of getting the angles and everything so bless him so grateful to him but what I will probably do is perhaps different steps so maybe specific individual videos on just using the different feet and see what they accomplish and also other bits and pieces on the machine just more specific if that is something that you guys would like to see please let me know in the comments below again if you have any questions on what I have shown you guys today again please put in the comments and yeah I get a talking point going and also if you guys have had any experience with that specific machine that I have and or other machines or older machines again let me know because it's always fascinating the journeys these machines take and also the owners and you know if they could speak I'm sure they would tell thousands of different stories so but I hope you've liked what I have done today so yeah I did my best guys and yeah sorry it's not it's not good enough I know and if I had better equipment and set up perhaps it would be more professional but I hope you enjoyed what I did you know today okay so all there is for me to say is thank you so much for watching and I hope whatever you guys are doing today having a really good day and yeah I will see you again this week so look out for another video if you haven't already done so and you'd like to hit that red button and subscribe and if you also like this video please give me a thumbs up all very appreciative okay thank you for watching take care and have a good week